pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening. Um, we're here with the same faces as usual to talk about this 246 acres of land for potential purchase. Um, the reason we needed to do a hearing on this issue is because we're looking to uh, have the voters consider buying a parcel of land that would cost $210,000 and it would essentially be a tax, a, a, an interest-free note spread over seven years. So by virtue of doing, voting on that Warren article and accepting it, it would be almost like we'd be buying into a bond. Um, we're buying into a note that's going to be spread over seven years. So we need to vet this issue because when we do, if we were to agree upon this, we're committing the town for the next seven years to pay $30,000 per year. Okay. So that is why we are here tonight. And it's warrant article number five in the upcoming warrants that um, we should all be seeing in the town report in the very near future. Um, but just to paraphrase, the warrant is, does the town agree to the purchase of 246 acres, I give the lot and uh, the map and lot numbers, um, and I basically exp we express in it, it's two hundred ten thousand dollars, thirty thousand dollars per year, interest free, in order to buy this land. Um, most of us all know that the land is um, essentially wooded, f large field, um, good amount of stone on there. It is right where the new town cemetery is being built. Um, we know that the land has been heavily logged over the years and it's going to take some management in order to allow that forest growth to get back to a place where it can begin to generate income. Um, we're also looking at this as a purchase of land for the town for future use and use is a very broad term and intentionally so because use could be 50, 100 years from now, do we need a school? Do we need a police department? Do we need a fire department? Do we need a ballpark? Anything in between. But it's, it's long-term planning ahead for this land if we wanted to commit ourselves to this note. Um, we, as a town, have a s limited amount of land for any kind of expansion or new, new buildings if the need were to arise. We have approximately four acres or so, most of it on um, to the left of us here. Um, would that suffice for future needs? Again, we hope that the cemetery is not going to fill up too fast, but there's going to be things like that cemetery, long-term issues that we may need to in encounter. Um, our overall growth is slow. We keep it that way through zoning, but no one knows what 100 years from now is going to bring. So. We want everyone to fully understand what we're, what is being proposed in the warrant and what the ramifications are over the next seven years and the fact that this land is now all in current use and is essentially $600,000 in tax income for the town. That land would no longer be taxed if we were to buy it. We wouldn't get the $600 per year over the next, for the remainder of our lives. Just for clarification, at first you said six hundred thousand, yeah. and then you said six hundred. Six hundred. Um, <laughs> um, I'm, I'm sorry. Six thousand. It's six thousand dollars. We get six. All right. Um, tax bill is six hundred. I'm throwing too, too many numbers. It's six hundred dollars for the two hundred forty-six acres in there. So I'm sorry. So it's not a lot of income. It's very low income, but it's something that we will f forfeit over the remainder of the town's life. So, pros and cons, I'm sure everyone has their thoughts on it, and I essentially want to let the other three selectmen say anything they want to say, then open up to everyone on the floor for questions or anything they wish to state with the guys on land. So, go to Bill first. No, I'm, gonna, I'm on the fence, and when I've <clears throat> recommended as one of the selectmen. I see the benefits. I know I've heard a lot of people discuss concerns back and forth. It's an opportunity looking forward. Um, that's you know, trying to like the cemetery. We built a cemetery that's going to be large for years ahead. 
and this is an opportunity that we may not want to pass up, and that's obviously the, uh, it's up to the voters what they want to do. Right. And I'll just briefly talk about the conditions that I think everyone most likely is aware of. Uh, Mr. Center wants us to, re the town to retain ownership forever. Uh, the land will be open to the public for general use without restrictions. We can develop, the town can develop it for any purpose, for municipal purposes. And if we want to change these rules at a future town meeting with two thirds of a vote of the people in the town, we can, we can change the rules with respect to how you use the land. We can't sell it. She did not want it sold. So they were the three basic restrictions she was going to put on the, the sale of the land. <coughs> um, just as a closing, this would prevent this land from ever being subdivided down the road. We know Brookfield has got a massive amount of conservation land and uh, land in current use. So it's not like we're in jeopardy of suddenly becoming a rural area turned into a suburban area per se, but all this land that is in current use or conservation is untouchable by the town. Um, this land would be able to be developed for any municipal purposes. So. And the, the price is a little over $800, $800 an acre. The big parcel on Tumble Down Dick Road that just sold, sold, sold for about $1,200 an acre. That was a very fair price. If, if we want to buy it. We've heard mix from, we, we've heard that, that price per acre may be in line, may be a little high, but where the best comp sales we could find where we think it's, it seems to be a decent per acre sale. All right, so I guess we'll stop rambling and open it up to the floor and let anyone weigh in as they see that. So the town cannot sell the land. Is that something that's in the deed? It'll be in a covenant that will be attached to the deed. I believe that's how it's going to be worked out, that we will not be able to sell off any portions of the land privately. The town will not be able to vote to sell it? No, that will be the covenant that we cannot do that. That will be attached to the deed. Covenants legally binding in the state? I, I, I don't know. I, if I was to answer that, I'd be given legal advice. I'm just not sure. Okay. Should be sure of that because they're, they're not legally binding okay. in other states. They need to get into it and have have it disappear in the future. Right. But it's uh, it, it, it seems to be a great purchase and it'll be a great asset to the town. Do you know of a mechanism, a legal mechanism that we could put into place other than putting into conservation that would allow us to prevent future sale of the land being parceled off? if the town is dying need money or something? No. no okay. Know, yeah. We'll definitely have to talk to council on the best mechanism to protect the land but not ultimately hold it hostage in a conservation type mode, if you will. Yeah. And that's a good point. We looked into a conservation easement and we might, there was an opportunity to maybe get $100,000 but all kinds of restrictions with the $100,000 that the town couldn't do this, the town couldn't do that. It would really be in conservation, and the intent here is that if we need or the town needs something in the future, we have a place to go to do that. So we, we elected not to pursue the uh, the conservation dollars. When the town buys it with its own tax money, we own we can do whatever we want. But that's right. That's the best way to be. Have you run those conditions through legal counsel? Um, we've talked to Laura about them and, and she didn't see any issues. We, we, we did talk to her about them. Um, the one thing I didn't explore is how, how the covenant could ultimately be undone. But she has explored this with us. We've talked to her and, and she said ultimately the town's going to need to vote on it and she gave us the best means of getting it done by way of warrant and a non and a non-interest bearing loan, she's like, it's, it's, the, it's still a loan you're committing to. But she has reviewed everything, and to include the um, stipulations, and, and she didn't have much of an issue with it. I, I think we would be, if there was a way to get out of this so we could sell the land, then I don't think we should go forward if we found that out, because then we were misleading everybody. So if an attorney comes back as far as I'm concerned and says, yes, there's a way around this, you can sell the land once you have it, 
then that's not what we agreed to, and we would have to rethink the whole situation. At, and at least I would, because that's not what we were agreeing to. What we agreed to with her it was that it could not be had to be used for the town, it couldn't be sold off or anything like that. So I'm only speaking for myself in that. Dick. Could the school district in the future build a school there without us selling the required land to the school district? Because that's normally what they do is they purchase land to build the schools. I don't know. Um, so the SAU would look to build a building on our property, town property. The, the SAU in the six towns would look at um, what met their needs, but it would have to be approved by the six towns, not just the town of Brookfield. But I think the question Dick's raising, would they build it on town property is his question, or would they want the property? <clears throat> is it like they a domain type uh, We look for a good location uh, level as much as possible. Uh, we found a good one right next to Dick once upon a time uh, that was uh, fairly level and would it be easy to develop. If it's hilly and bony, it uh, gets into other issues, especially if you have any ledge. Who owns the, that's the question is, who would have to own the property? Does the school district have to own it or could they use town property? I think that taking it to the voters, if it was approved by the voters, we would have the authority to negotiate a contract at that point in time with the owner. Now again, we're not say, I'm not saying they would buy that. I'm saying they would look for a good piece of land for the school district. Are there any other schools in the system that are built on town property currently? No. So take schools off the list. Not necessarily. I mean, we would have to negotiate it, right? I mean, yeah. Yeah. It, it would be a probably a complicated deeding process or some sort of process to get it done, but or even a leasing process. But I'm sure it's it's doable. If right. you, I was just going to say, 99 year lease for a dollar. <clears throat> There's ways to figure it out. I would think it would depend on how much the school board wanted to uh, negotiate. But Dick, was that what you were getting at? Is yes. Yeah. Well, I, I guess what I was asking was, would we have to sell? Right, and that's what I'm saying. If that land was going to be used, but if it could be negotiated as a 99-year lease or something, that's something else again. Because it's not an eminent domain type thing where the, 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 the school could say, we need that, we're taking that municipal land, and now we're entitled to it because you're part of our school district. I, I, I just, that's, that doesn't sound right to me. No. So, I, I, to me, I would envision that we would have to then either deed a portion of the land or lease a portion of the land, you know, long term. And then uh, the town would obviously need to vote on that, I would, I would definitely think. The uh, issue of the school, I might as well talk about it a little bit. Sure. The uh, school district, I don't think it's, to my knowledge, has ever taken anything by eminent domain. Mm -hmm. If we needed land, we have in fact purchased it with the approval of the voters. Right now, based on space needs, I do not see any additional consideration for any construction for a minimum of maybe 10 plus more years. Mm. We have adequate space. Um, we have contracts with uh, sending schools, for example, Middleton, yep. where if Kingswood started to get too many students, we can make adjustments where we can change it where we can only take a limited number of their students. Um, but uh, I don't see the school district needing any more land for many years. I would think that the owner of the property now, if they specify for use, town use and included schools, that there'd be a way to talk to them and maybe have in the original contract have it be that it will not be sold unless it was for the purpose of building a school. Mm -hmm. Because if we own the land, and say 10 years from now, the school district wanted to build a school here, 
and wanted to pay us, say, $50,000 for five acres of the land to put the school on, that would kind of be a win-win situation for us, too. The odds of them trying to put a school here are really not that big. Mm -hmm. yeah, not the odds are very slow. Yeah, yeah, but you never know what's going to happen down the line. Either. And I think that's the point. It's 100 years down the road. Yeah. You don't know. We don't know. You know, this could become a more centralized location. Roads could be, be more yeah. problem. But it's, it's points that I think we need to consider. But I, uh, as I say, if it could be put in the original contract, that it would be yeah. to use the specific things that it could be used for, mm -hmm. that they would agree with. They might put school as one of them, which would be a benefit for us if we had land that was already good flat land that would make a nice school in a good location. It might help us to get a school in the future, 50 right. years from now. Right. From a conservation standpoint, uh, that's a nice piece of property mm -hmm. because the drainage goes down to Pike Brook, which empties into the Salmon Falls watershed. So from a drinking water protection standpoint, I think that's a plus for the town too. I mean, for the town to own it right, and not right. have that land developed in the future into houses and so forth. Right. <clears throat> uh, so you mentioned the six hundred dollar loss in taxes per year. What other uh, are there other costs that you anticipate or sources of revenue that you anticipate on the long in the long term? For example, revenue from wood harvest or expenses related to maintenance of the land in one way or another? Overall, the maintenance of the land, I don't foresee anything because we're not, there's nothing on the land. It's just, it's just wooded. Um, there's a field on there that I think there's a more or less, there's ability to hay, but the hay swap is in order to maintain the field to take the hay. Um, the wood harvest has potential, but I think it's longer term because I think from what we've heard, the, the, the harvesting has been overly done and so it's going to take some time for it to regenerate, um, but ultimately it could turn into a source of revenue for the town um, if, we, if we wanted to do a select cut and you know, continue to harvest wood, but that, by all accounts, is 25 plus years down the road. Right, but this is forever, so mm -hmm. what, what, are the, what are those numbers 25 years from now, once it gets to the point where we can start doing selective cutting? I'm going assuming, to assuming today's price is just, you know, pick something. I'm going to defer to Ed uh, because I I don't know what kind of you know dollars we're getting out of. Well, uh, on average, there's about eight hundred to a thousand dollars to the landowner per truckload of logs coming off. You know, of average quality, everything being relative. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and that kind of acreage. You know, you should be able to, you should be able to pull, you know, four or five thousand dollars within ten years, and then go up from there as the, as those matru trees mature. Yeah. That would be my guess. Yeah, and and I think that's all Rob's looking for that's is just all some, you can do actually. Yeah. So what was the what's the long term number using today's assumptions? Well, I, I would I mean, think assuming that within I would think within ten to fifteen years you could probably get five thousand dollars off it. Per year? Uh, no, 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 probably every three years. So a couple thousand dollars a year yeah. on average? Yeah, if you And I, you know, I've, I walk a lot of woods in town, but I cannot, I can say that I haven't walked that entire piece, so I don't know. Just the area I've walked, it's been aggressively timbered. Mm -hmm. So it's going to take a while for it to come back. And from what we understand, there's not a lot of ledge back there, right? There's a lot of large buried snow, but no real problem ledges until we get really far back, right? For harvesting reasons? I, I, just, I guess for harvesting and ultimately yeah, there's no, for Yeah, there's no problem for harvesting any of that land. Yeah. That much I do know. Okay. So can we, so with Ed's estimate, there's, um, there's not going to be a loss in taxes? 
No, once we were able to let that forest get back healthy again, right. we'll we'll definitely make that up and then some if we wanted to go and continue to log it. And, and so I was going cash cow. I was going to ask Ed if we can quote you on that number of maybe two thousand a year average to expect in ten years. <clears throat> oh, I was yeah, sure, go ahead. But in a hundred years, can we but, go? But all, in all reality, I mean, if you if you can have the foresight to say, yeah, okay, this year we lose the six hundred dollars in taxes, and in five years, you know, that's three thousand dollars. But and you know, you're gonna there's gonna come a point where you're gonna quickly go in the other direction, right. and you're gonna stop making money. Yeah, I think that's Rick's point ultimately. And if it, you know, if I was to hedge a bet. I would say within a couple of years of purchasing it, you could have a, a, a forester or you know timber harvest go in there for a cleanup, and you could probably get a couple of thousand dollars off the entire thing. As a you know strictly as a cleanup, just to to say okay we need to we need to start you know a nice plan for harvesting in the future, but you know here's the hindrances we got you know. A lot of small stuff that's in the way is going to inhibit the growth of the good stuff and go in and clean it up. Mm -hmm. I think you could, you could very quickly defer the, la the tax loss. Mr. So, Chairman, can I ask you a question? Please, please. What type of timber cut did they do and how long ago did they do it? Um, type, they, I mean, they harvest, they do it all, meaning they. Uh, they Take hardwood, saw logs, chips. They took all the pine? Well, they took a good amount of the mature pine. They took all of the mature pine. Um, what, I, what I'm getting at is, uh, like Doc Wilson, they took all the pine. It'll be 25 years before they can probably get another crop out of it. No, they didn't, you know, I mean, in, in, no, they did not take all of the pine, no. Okay, but typically if you're gonna go in and do a timber cut of selectively, that's a timber stand improvement, a TSI. Mm -hmm. I've done one on my land about every 12, 15 years. That's one cut every 12 or 15 years. You can't just figure every year going in and getting a few thousand dollars out of it. Correct, but you can average it out. I mean, so you, you need to understand that. You might not be able to do anything cost effectively for quite a few years. You'd have to have a force to tell you. Yeah. So we, we, it's clear we're going to need a forestry plan in order to make to make that a a profitable <coughs> track of land for us. So, but ultimately you, we can get there, and you know, with the right management, it sounds doable from what everyone's basically saying. Um, we'll go to Diane first, and then Rob, then Rick. Well, I was going to follow up on Rob's question uh, because you just mentioned another activity that will cost money having a a, a, a uh, forestry plan mm -hmm. developed by a licensed forester presumably mm -hmm. will cost a few bucks. Sure. Um, presumably only needs to be renewed. I don't know how often they have to yeah. be renewed every ten years, maybe. Ed, do you know? I, I don't. I, that's uh, negotiating. You know how long that's good for. But their fees are generally a percentage of the harvest. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Nothing for twenty years. <laughs> well, see, I, I don't. You know, I think there'll be timber before twenty. Okay. Because they'll go in there, as I suggested. They'll the first thing they would do to help pay for them, their services is they're going to look to do a cleanup oh. and an organizational thing, okay. which will hopefully pay for their fees to design the plan. You don't think cash? Can I follow up? Yeah, please. Um, so, are there? It, this is continuing on along the lines of any additional costs mm -hmm. that, you know, operational costs, if you will, going down, mm -hmm. down the road. It's hard, I know it's hard to, to judge because right now there's no formal plan. I mean, and, and frankly, that's one of the things that bothers me about this, mm -hmm. is that there's not a, a, a specific plan. It's, it's very nebulous as to what we're being asked to fund. Um, you know, theoretically, you know, it's not a bad idea, I suppose, in, in most people's minds, and the, the numbers aren't horrendous. But I guess one of the concerns that I have, and, and we, I, I'll go back to the last hearing, the last meeting that we had, when the question was asked, well, what is the plan? You're asking that money be spent, mm -hmm. and yet there's, there's not a specific plan. I think we've been forthright when saying 
we don't know what the land's going to be for, I know, yeah. and 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 I and, and I think that is exactly the purpose. We don't know. Um, we do know that ultimately towns do need land for whatever reason, but it, we can't foresee it right now. We also know that the land ultimately could ultimately be sold privately and subdivided. That that is a potential. And are we? purposely buying out potential homes that are going to be tax generating but also cost incurring to the town. So I think it's right now it's more of we're buying land with the idea of just the, the idea that the future doesn't we don't know what the future holds. Yeah, it's this I, we don't know. It's a very intangible thing. But, but for the fact that we're also going we're protecting a big chunk of land for potential future use. So I digressed a little bit because of the, mm -hmm. the, the nebulous nature yeah, yeah. of what, what we're looking at. So it's uh, it's really hard mm -hmm. to get your hands around those incremental mm -hmm. or operational costs that might pop up yeah. downstream. I can't foresee any real cost unless someone can tell me otherwise, other than it's going to be thrown into our liability insurance, which I don't think land is going to cause any kind of premium increase in the loss of the tax revenue, unless I'm missing something. Um, to follow up on Rob's comment about other additional costs, let me just ask, are the pins set for the property? It was surveyed about five years ago, and that current deed was reported, so I, I think they are. I'm okay. pretty sure they are. Yeah, so that can be quite expensive. Yes, it can. Do that. Yeah, so when, when we had this checked out, it seemed like we were pretty solid on our corners, so multiple corners, obviously. So, so if it was five years ago, they set pins. Yeah, so we should be good. Craig, you want to say something? I'm, I'm lost kind of. I was just going to say that um, the um, it seems to me, I don't know why we don't just simply call it that we're purchasing a town forest. That's the purpose, is to create a town forest. You create a forest stewardship committee <clears throat> that works with a uh, forester until such time something else is needed by the town, which I doubt if that'll happen in the, the next 50 years. Mm -hmm. So the plan is a town forest, it's trees. That's all it is, trees and a little bit of hay in the hay we're not going to get into. So it's a town forest. That's the best use of that land. Rob. So I like what Craig said. The, 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 point, the question I was going to ask, really, I guess Diane and I are thinking alike, you know, there's not a plan. I look at this and it's, it's very convenient that there's exactly 246 acres and that's exactly how much we need which I think is, it, it's, it's kind of silly, right? I mean, I sit here thinking, well, how much, do we, what's the plan? Like Diane was saying, how much do we need? Do we need 100? Do we need 10? I heard five acres for a school, right? 246 is a big number. Mm -hmm. And I just wonder whether we considered whether we needed only 100 at 800 bucks an acre and we could be much less than this. Or do we really need 500? And a couple of years from now, you're going to be coming back with another parcel you want us to buy. So I think that's the that's another way of looking at what it means to not have a plan. Is that we don't are we buying too much or not buying enough? I think the latter of your two points is not reasonable. I, I, it's clear we're never going to at least within the, the multiple lifetimes we're not going to be looking to buy more land. But can we call out and buy less? Um, I think Mrs. Hunter wanted to get rid of the track of land. And um, if we start subdividing the land, are we going right back to where we originally are trying to protect from, which is going to be private sale and subdivision? Um, you know, if we were to go and buy the land and box it off so they, so they can't get the road, so, maybe we're doing two so, of the same thing. So why, I, I didn't see in this proposal that the purpose of this was to keep it from being subdivided and developed. Right. I, I, think, I think if that's the purpose, then we absolutely shouldn't do it. Absolutely not, because we have a ton of conservation land in town already. I don't think that's the intended purpose, but I think that they, is... They don't say it, because you're going to water. It's a, it's a benefit. 
it, it's at least my it's my perceived benefit. If you, if, you, if you want more houses here, then let's 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 allow land like this to go out there, and it can possibly be subdivided and, and done. So the next, it is it is a benefit in my eyes. So the next time two hundred fifty acres comes on the market, are we gonna are you gonna be pushing to buy it? If someone's gonna sell this for eight hundred bucks an acre, probably not, because this is a track of land, and it suits our needs for future land purchases. It, it, it kills off any potential need for land purchases for years and years and years to come. The towns, in my opinion, shouldn't be in the business of buying land up for, for a conservation. That's not, that's not what towns should be in the business of doing. Then, then I suggest that you don't say that that's the reason we're doing it. Because it's, I think it's not the reason. I, I agree with you, the town shouldn't be doing that. And I agree, and mm -hmm. so I think you just muddy the waters when you say that. When I say what that it'll that, that, it, that by doing this we keep it from being developed, because I, the purpose is actually for to, for us to develop it as you know for municipal purposes. I it's actually think that's an added be benefit, Rob. I, I disagree with that. I think it's an added benefit. I think it's one of many benefits for the town that if we if we leave this land out there, it still has potential to be subdivided, and it's 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 one more benefit for the town. So if it were subdivided and built, mm -hmm. I agree that. More houses means less rural, which mm -hmm. is something that probably a lot of us think isn't a good thing. But it also lowers our taxes potentially. Right? Arguably, it no. Depends on, depends on what kinds of how how it is. Right? What if we get a bunch of people in with four <laughs> kids for a family? What if it's fifty-five and older? Right? I mean, it's you know there there are there are way there anyway. Yeah, so, I I, uh, I get I, your point, Rob. But I think by virtue of saying it could that's one more added benefit. I I I don't see it as being a problem. And I don't think it means that we're going to be buying tracts of land wherever they are in order to protect the integrity of the town. I just think it's one more benefit. Fair enough. One follow-up question. Go ahead. Why, why now? If we don't think that we have a need for 50 mm -hmm. years, what's your argument for why we need to do it now? We have a lot of, still have, mm -hmm. a lot of big tracts of land in town. Yeah. And, you know, in the next 20 years, if we decide that we wanted to you know, do this in a maybe a more less opportunistic, more mm -hmm. orderly fashion would be to say, oh, let's instead put a warrant article, start putting away ten thousand dollars a year, you know, twenty thousand dollars a year for the next, you know, some number of years, build up a fund, and then go out and try to, you know, buy the land once we own it rather than having to bond it. Anyway, just I I, I get that this opportunity fell in our laps, and I get that it sounds like it's not a that it's not a, certainly not a bad deal. It might be a good deal, and it might be really good for the town. I get that. Mm -hmm. I'm just, you know, if we had a plan, I'd feel better. Well, that's the why now. You just answered the question because it's an opportunity that fell in our laps at a, what appears to be a good deal, and it satisfies the need for future land purchases. That's why now. But again, with a plan, I, I don't know what kind of plan people want. I, I, I just can't tell you about a plan because I don't think anyone could give me a good plan if other than it's it's, well, it's for the what ifs. Well, let me ask you, let me ask the what ifs. What if everything came to pass? We needed a transfer station, we needed a fire station, mm -hmm. we needed a police station, we needed a middle school and a high school. Mm -hmm. How much land would you want in order to accommodate all those functions, and maybe we want a library, maybe, I don't know what else, right? mm -hmm. all the things that we could think that a town might want to build, a park, mm -hmm. everything. How much land would you need to accommodate all of those things? To including the parking sense. lots, roads, all Between that. 240 and 250. <laughs> <laughs> so I think we're in good shape. <laughs> I, I mean, but I, th I think if you did the numbers, you'd look and say that it, might, it would be, even with a nice size park, probably 30 acres max. Right? I would, yeah, I would guess. And you know, including cemetery, future cemeteries, and the whole. Th I mean, right. I don't think you get anywhere near two hundred. No, no. But uh, all right, well, let me uh, go to Rick really quick. Yeah. The, uh, <laughs> back to the forestry plan. That would be the responsible thing to do because then you would uh, know exactly what you have income for the town and how to make up for the taxes. Mm -hmm. You have a solid number to give the taxpayers. Second. Does the current owner have a forestry plan? That might be a good question to ask her. We could definitely ask her. Um, she's been having a log, but I don't know if she's ever had a plan made up. So. I, don't, I don't believe this. 
I don't believe there was a registered type forester plan. Her husband is the logger. That's what I thought. Is he did the logging? He did the logging. So still a good question. But no, we can ask because if it's done, go. Thanks, Rick. Let's let it go. All right, we'll go to Dick then, Ernie. <laughs> I think we're missing a point here. <clears throat> I believe the land was offered all or nothing. I believe so. I don't think we ever counted saying, can we take less? The, and I, that was my response to Rob. Is I, I don't know if that's possible. But I believe it was, here's my track of land, do you want to buy it? That's my impression of it. But <clears throat> we never did ask the question. Well, I'm sure that'll come up at the town meeting. Mm -hmm. Just like Rob has yeah. posted. But I thought from day one that she said, this is it. Take it all or don't take it. You've dealt with Mrs. Hunter more than I. I, 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 I we never got into that space. Oh, okay. She so, said, here's what I have. Are you interested in purchasing it? We never came back and said, can we have okay. half? So it's th I that's why I can't answer the question that it's, it's yeah, we, my we could. Yeah, my conception is wrong, man. Okay. Ernie. How much road frontage is on the Lyford Road? You want to do the math there? <laughs> yes. Do you want to count our, our cemetery land also? Let's just say hypothetically, it's a thousand feet. Okay, we can go with that. That's more building lines. You know, you're talking about subdivisions. Mm -hmm. And Dick will remember the whole subdivision. But to put in a subdivision, you have to put in roads that meet the town standard and the town's approval before you can get the first building permit. Oh, absolutely. And yes. that's why we don't have a lot of subdivisions in Brookfield. Mm -hmm. And so basically you keep talking about subdivisions. That's good for four lots. It's good for four lots unless, again, they put in a, a, a road. And there's probably five or six for sale today that aren't selling. No, they're not selling. But so, so I think maybe your point, Ernie, is that the four lots, today's market, today's market value would be... 20,000. 20, 25,000 apiece? Yeah, they would sell at that price, yes. Mm -hmm. So there's... So it doesn't look a bad investment financially. The question still is, do we want it? Can we, can we use it in the future? Well, the select owner asking me a question, it's going to go to the voters to find out. That's right. Thank you. Uh, I have two questions. Uh, has It appears that there's um, only two significant abutters, um, other than Western Press Lyford. Um, have you folks reached out to either of them to see if there's any concerns or input or... Offer to sell us more, or I mean, is there any? Has there been any contact? Yeah, with yes, you there has, yes, there has been. Um, one, one of butter wanted to go to Moose Mountain, and have have that easement put on it. Moose Mountain Greenways. Greenways. Oh, Greenways. Well, oh. Sell the sell, sell the conservation easement to Moose Mountain Greenways, and and put it lock it up in that type of conservation. This parcel, then. This okay. the two hundred and forty six, and another of butter would like to acquire it, but just can't afford it. Okay. And second question. Mm -hmm. um, I know that uh, I've, I've walked it. Um, there's the old, I think, is it Old Governor's Road? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, right. That runs through it or along the edge of one, one boundary. Yep. Um, I suspect and I hope that the answer to this is no, but typically in my experience, um, those kinds of back roads might have led to illegal dumping at some point in time. Mm -hmm. Has there been any suggestion that this might have happened or any way to ensure that the town wouldn't be liable if we found some kind of toxic? There's a pile of shingles back there. That's what we've seen when we walk the road. A pile out. It's not on our property, it's on the other people's property. It's somebody, yeah. But it's a pile of shingles out of a, out of a pickup truck. Okay. But we, we haven't, uh, no signs of any kind of toxic or oil, which is probably my bigger concern would be oil dumping. Um, you know, we would notice it in the water if there were oil. And couches and stuff. Yeah, no, there's no so. <laughs> so, uh, but, but that's interesting because the current owner wants to keep it open because she could put rocks there to keep people out, but that's not her intent. She wants people to be able to get in there and use the land. And that's the risk you have, right? You, you right. go down there and you don't want to pay the dump fee, so you dump it. 
Ernie. You know, if you look at the map very carefully, mm -hmm. uh, this land abuts uh, over by the uh, property owners on the Pike Brook Road. That's right. Yes. From the railroad track over, that's mostly swamp. That's right. So you're not going to have any cr cash crop out of there, which is at least, looks like close to 50% of the land. A good percentage, anyway. So, again, for your anticipation of making money on timbering, I think it's going to be marginal. Well, the town is given an opportunity. Whether they want to, it's their, de their decision to do it. We have seized an opportunity so we can present it to the town to make a decision whether they want to purchase this or not. Because we've had different people over the years say they would like to get a piece of land for the town for future use. We seized that opportunity to say, here's somebody that wants to work with us. We have done, we've talked to her, some of this says, we talked to her, I said she would allow a school on it personally, but you no. Know, but we haven't formally written that down. Now it's up to the voters to say, do they want to do this or they don't want to do this? We can't project exactly how much lumber is going to come off at this point. We have said very clearly we don't see any in the near future. This is everything is long term. And it's up to people, be our grandchildren and everybody else to make a decision whether the town made the right decision or not. We're just, you know, we've done things here in town like just the cemetery. We're looking a century ahead because we have a lot of space. And uh, someday we'll be very happy that we did that. Well, we won't. Yeah, we doubled up what we needed for cemetery land, about five acres. We only developed two, you know, but we have enough to expand. And this is that same breath, you know, what if? You had two acres right next door, all paid for. Mm. Yeah. There was some question about whether we could use it for that because it might be a little wet. Are we talking about the, the land behind? Yeah, between here and the salt water. Oh. Yeah. There's been talk about that over the years for me and all different types and, of things. And I offered free land for a cemetery, but that was not taken up either. I very clearly have mentioned to anybody that I've met, they've asked about that, and I've always said to anybody that I've met that you offered your land, and we had several other people offer land to us that it was in their best interest, in, our, in my opinion, as to why they were doing it, because we'd have to pay, build a road to get to it, and they'd have the road to use. So it was not an enemy expense involved for building a road that went way back. So it was not in our benefit. That's one of the reasons we sent out a letter just for the cemetery part, and that's not what we're here to discuss. We knew whatever we did, somebody's going to come back the next day, and I, you're one, I give all credit to that and say, well, why didn't you? So we... Why didn't you ask me? I wasn't aware. So that's a couple years ago we put in everybody's tax thing a little note. If you have land you want to sell it, here's your opportunity. And you and uh, two or three others came forward and we very much appreciate that. Um, so in, in the event that this goes through and as Craig had suggested this is a town forest and there's a stewardship plan and so mm -hmm. forth. Um, who, who would be the one to decide how that property can be used? And the reason I'm asking is that the, the property line along the right of way for the railroad, um, for the old rail, now the rail trail, um, there's one portion of it, the, the easternmost portion of that, of that um, frontage is the only part where you can get to the rail trail without getting wet. It, there, it's, it's dry access there, mm -hmm. and it might be, in the future, a desirable access point for hiking, snowmobile trails. Who's going to get to decide what restrictions mm -hmm. will be placed on, this, on the use of the town land? And Mrs. Hunter, who, who wants to sell it to us, said it'd be open to public use unless two-thirds of the people at a town meeting say we want to change that. <coughs> well, public use to some people means anything but motorized vehicles. So, I mean, so, so, so I, I understand that she said it's up to the town. My question is, once it's, if we, if this goes forward, mm -hmm. who's going to be making those decisions? Townspeople. 
What, what, what I would suggest we do is we do what the planning board's done, and that is you make a list of things that mm -hmm. are permitted that everyone can resonate with. And if it's not on that list, you have to come forward and ask for permission. And that's what, and that you have to consider. So you find the short list that everybody says, yeah, we, we, we agree with that. And everything else is an exception, and you have to talk about it. That's one way to attack it. Okay. And would that be an ordinance you're talking about? Because that would be the only way you can enforce it. If that's the way you have to do it. Mm -hmm. So we would have to go to like a warrant article where we would all well, agree. That a, war a warrant article is different than an ordinance. The question is how to implement it, right? Yeah. Yeah, we need to do explore that exact issue because um, with Diane, that that was one of my concerns. Is we're like, oh, public use, and it sounds great, but you know, public use to me might be I can buzz my snowmobile across it. Another person say, no, it's only horseback and hiking. We would need to set up rules, restrictions, and allowances that can be done on that land. Um, you know, but also protect the town from any liability down the road as well. So. You know, I think ultimately if this land purchase was to happen, we would need to set up either a commission or we would need to have hearings on that. And then either do the ordinance rule or I would imagine, I would envision more of a warrant that would have a list of acceptable purposes there. Follow up. Please. If it's purchased and someone gets injured on the land and it's open to the public, are we liable? I don't know if somebody already has that. Um, are we, yes, we would be because it's town land and, it's, and we, we, we've opened it up for use. Um, our liability insurance would have coverage for us though. Now as a property owner, if I open up my land and someone gets hurt on it, the state guarantees $2 million worth of coverage. These, these are some of the questions that maybe you can head off at town meeting because these will be some of the questions I think that will be brought up. Going back in town history, a long time ago when Jim Whittlemore, I don't know who else, were selectmen, the uh, land up around Mountain Lake was offered to the town. And the town turned them down because they had to sign a piece of paper saying they were being given land worth $300,000. That was the price, they just had to sign a piece of paper. And they wouldn't sign it because of a legal liability. I know our liability policy would cover us. Um, what Rich is talking about, I, that, that's something we definitely need to firm up. But when you own something and you open it up, you are technically liable for it. But as most conditions that are going to be out there are going to be expected reasonable, and you really can't foresee any kind of potential negligence on our behalf. But in the litigious society we live in, someone might decide to trip on a stick and say that that stick shouldn't have been there, you know. That but can happen right here in this parking lot. That very well could. So it's, but it, it is going to be an open source for re recreation and whatnot, then there are ramifications of liability-wise. Rob? So I'd just like to point out that if our liability insurance is going to cover that, mm -hmm. our liability insurance premium will go up. From what we've heard from Mary Lou, the premium increase for the land is nominal at most. So you just might want to have that answer handy, and list. And when some people ask about the cost, I mean that is a cost. Mm -hmm. And by accounting for it, and saying it's minimal, then you, you know you're going you're gonna to answer that question before somebody gets upset and says, "Oh, you're not thinking about everything." Mm -hmm. so, um, so I noticed that you are. It sounds like maybe town purpose is to open a Dunkin' Donuts and a McDonald's on this land. Is that what I'm reading into this? You got it. Yeah, we um, want to make it convenient. Uh, and you know, maybe a Walmart too. No, I think it's a dollar store. A dollar store. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, saw, I saw those. <laughs> your your examples here are oh. showing uh, fast food oh. Uh, oh. dissemination. <coughs> <laughs> oh, I understand now. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> you know, hey, what but the heck? But it would be town owned. Yeah. yeah. It would be town owned for profit. Yes, Ed. Last year, at town meeting, there was a motion made for the town to do something or for the selectmen to do something. Yes. Do you recall what that exactly was? It was for us to explore what the options were and essentially it was a fact-finding mission. It was really a best, best way to describe it. And, and so we've done what we could to figure out our options, what the cost would be, and potential avenues of funding the purchase. And, and we've 
that's how we've come to this. Yeah, I'm Rob. More serious question. Um, Please go ahead. So, <laughs> um, I appreciate the line on that. What, what would the process be if, when somebody's, say we purchase the land, yeah. and somewhere down the road somebody says, oh, we should build a park there, yeah. or some other purpose, some other use for it, some other sure. municipal use, what would that process in, include? How, who decides whether or not we're going to have a park there? I understand. If money's expended, I understand who decides that. But mm -hmm. who decides whether we're going to, you know, because it could be that somebody says, oh, we're going to have volunteers that are going to do the development for the park. It's not going to cost the town anything. What's the process by which somebody gets approval to do a project on this land? I would bring it up and tell me. I mean, this is a town, town property. Town You're property development of town land, I think, has got to be a warrant and or at least brought up a town meeting and, and voted upon. And then the funding obviously would be the whole other issue. So it's 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 developing town property. So it would have to be the town by way of warrant and or at the town meeting bluntly. About I would say 15 years ago, we had a playground committee, which is now defunct. And the thought of that was to eventually, and some people have donated to it, or different organizations. And the idea was to put a playground for the younger kids so everybody didn't have to go further away. Um, money was collected for that. I don't know if we ever discussed how the process would be. You know, we're looking <clears throat> next door was one of the spots they were looking at. Uh, potential behind, in the back, was another spot that was being looked at behind the shed. Um, but I don't remember them coming into the logistics of how, you know, the final decisions. I've assumed it was going to go to the town meeting to to give some final kind of blessing on it. But I don't think it was ever discussed back then. So what would happen if somebody decided that you know they wanted a snowmobile to cut across the back of that, and they were they just go out there and clear some brush? Is that good or bad? It doesn't cut town cost the town anything. Or someone else do the same like with hiking or horseback riding trail or something like that? Are, are those can people just do stuff like that, or or they can they can ride the horse on it, but and they ride the horse their uh, snowmobile on it, but they can't cut back brush or what? I, I think that's where a commission is going to need to be put into place to figure out how best that we're going to manage that land. Because someone could want to cut a trail, or the Boy Scouts could say, we want to mark the trails and make a trail so you can reach the, the train run one. You know, and, and I think that's where we're going to need to have a commission set into place so we can say any kind of alteration of the land is got to come through us, any kind of use of the land other than the few things that we're going to allow would need to come, you know, would need to be permitted by the Board of Selectmen or the Commission or something along those lines. So I think having, I've, I've now heard, I think, three answers. One is it has to go to town meeting. Another is that it has to go to the Selectmen. And the third is it has to go to commission, a commission that is yet to be decided. I think having a definitive answer per se, if we do this next year, here's what the process is. I understand that it can always change. Right? But I think you but asked three questions. You said if you wanted to build schools and this and this, I said obviously. No, no, no. no. My, my last but, question was just about how do we. But you, how do we the, the second question is more of a. It's far more of a fluffy question. What if someone wanted to cut back some brush so they can have a nice horseback trail? Well, that's a lot different than building a building on the land. I understand. Yeah, you're comparing apples to oranges. No, no, the building's going to, I understand that if, it, if it, money's expended, mm -hmm. that absolutely has to go to a town meeting. Right. Uh, I, well, I would assume it would. Right? Yeah, I mean, Our practice that. has always been to do as, that, something like that as a war article, mm -hmm. um, not just sneak it into the budget. Yeah. But, um, but, at, but in, in either case, it would go to town meeting, either mm -hmm. in the budget or as a separate war article. I'm just, my, I think my question, maybe, maybe I try to boil it down to who is in charge out there? I, th I think that mm -hmm. the answer that the selectmen decide yes. is, is probably the best answer. Yeah. I think and that's the answer for now, but I think ultimately we may want to consider some body that would ultimately be the sounding board for any kind of options out there. Right. Well, somebody the was chopping, right. let's use next door here, the four acres or whatever. Somebody's in there chopping trees down and doing clearing. Mm -hmm. Some we, yeah. uh, I'm speaking for myself, would say, Ed, are you on the phone here? You've got a problem here. And uh, he would, you know, cease and desist type of thing. That would be my thought. If they were, what would you guys do if they were, somebody was back chopping trees down next door on the lot? Yeah, it would definitely be a selectman type issue. 
as far as I'm concerned. But I think having a clear answer mm -hmm. is better than the answer, the first answer I, I got. I think that you know having to be the selectman, the selectman may decide to defer to create a commission. Mm -hmm. But you guys would appoint that commission, I would assume, probably, right? I mean, I think appointed or elected, we would probably need to consider which option it would be. Um, it's just you're throwing all these what ifs out there, and we're and I appreciate you're trying to think ahead, and we're giving you our answers the best we can. And, and but the point is, we don't even know if we can buy in the land yet. <laughs> right, <laughs> if you're asking people to spend two hundred thousand dollars. I'm asking, people to, consider, I'm asking people to consider it. I'm asking people to consider it. And then the next step is what will we do with the land? And that is the that is the nebulous that was described. We don't know what we're gonna do with the land. But I think we would I would lobby for an elected commission to manage it, just like the, the elected cemetery trustees manage the cemetery. They make all the decisions on that land. If it's a big if it's a if it's a major issue, they come to the town. But they operate it, and, and I, I would lobby for an elected board of commissioners to manage the parcel. That's what I'd lobby for. So I think having a clear answer for what it's going to be next year and what direction you're thinking it should go, it would be helpful, right? I, I don't. It's not very satisfying as a to get the answer is that we just don't know. It's nebu It's it's in, it's inherently nebulous. I think at the very least you should know, at least for next year, and assuming it passes. What's the process? Who's in charge of that one? I think the answer being the selection is a perfectly fine answer and that we're going to figure out the details. I think it's fine, but at least somebody's in charge. Okay. Anything else? Yeah. So I understand that the money, the, uh, the amount of money we're talking about in the context of my question is very small. It's only $200,000. No, no, that's not only. That's $200,000. Well, well, my question relates to the debt ceiling that the state imposes on us. So we're talking about incurring debt here. Mm -hmm. And um, I, my understanding, Mary Lou would probably know the answer off the top of her head, but my understanding is that our, our debt ceiling is somewhere in the neighborhood of $93 million. They went, you're, I'm getting blank stares. Uh, I know. So, <laughs> or, so there is a, I don't remember the, I don't have the RSA in front of anybody mm -hmm. knows, but there is, a, there is a debt ceiling. There is a limit on how much debt a town can take on. Mm -hmm. That's true the value of the land. I believe, it, I believe it's based on, at least primarily on, the assessed value of the land in town. town. Right, when we're in that 90 plus, thousand, 90 plus million range, you know. So uh, my question is, do, do we know how much debt we currently have? Yes. None. 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 Zero. We don't, have, we don't carry debt. Uh, I think that's wrong. Okay. Can we, can we, can we, if we, if we let the school district, would we still oh. owe oh, on the bond? Yes. Okay, so we do have debt. The question is how much? Do we have a ballpark idea of how much that is? No. no. Ernie, would you know? There are separate political entities, so I'm not sure how that formula would apply to the town in its property valuation. I can tell you how that value uh, applies to the school district. But how how much of the bond do we does, does Brookfield owe? No. Mm -hmm. It's based on a percentage of uh, two things. Profit value and number of students. That's your uh, twenty-five seventy-five, and that's how we work out what we have to but pay. I thought for the bond purpose, the purpose of the bond, those were locked in, right? It's too damn small. I believe the selectmen have that. I don't know if it's in this report over here or not. I'll go look. All right, so I have on top of that, we do know we have the county that we have to pay for. I don't know if that's it's the bond for the nursing home. Right, that was my. That was my. I mean, so we do have that. We do know that, I think we were all purchases, for example, we paid for our thing in Wakefield, uh, but we don't own any of that property. You know, we paid for the build, portion of building the new firehouse, et cetera, but we have no ownership of it. Right, so our big obligation would be the school board and the county. Right. Is that debt or is that uh, cost of services? Yeah, I think the only one we have is the school board. That's, we signed a bond, I suspect, for the school board. Right. We, didn't, we didn't sign anything for the county. They just levied that on us. Right. Same with Wakefield. Yes. And they're building a lot of services. But with Wakefield, we could leave. Uh, in theory, we could leave. We could leave, yeah. We could go bare. Yeah. And, and, we'd, and find some other alternative, and we wouldn't continue to owe them money. Correct. Right. Right. Yes. The total amount of the school district's Debt obligation as of June 30th of 2015 
is $42,365,923. The entire district? Entire district. Approximately what percent are we? Well, that's a number I don't normally look at. Uh, it is figured out every year based on, like if this town gets revalued, those numbers get recomputed anytime the numbers change every year so that we follow the formula of 7525. Um, as far as one is the ability to pay, that's a property valuation, and then the number of students, the uh, cost of the district. But as a percentage for the town, I believe it's under 10%, but uh, I'm, I cannot give you an accurate figure. So we're, we're a small number of millions of dollars. And the county is, that bond was what, 25? 20 years, 23 million, I think it was for the, the amount. Mm -hmm. So it's taken a long time, but again, that's mm -hmm. more towns dividing it up. Assuming it was paid, we saw, you know, literally split right off the bat. They had to pay it off today, we would have our portion. You have a lot of towns that would be taking in a lot of richer mm -hmm. towns than we are. Right. You know, Moulton always says, well, we're paying half of it because of the waterfront property and everything. So. <clears throat> if you had to pay it overnight, I don't know what they want. It's not going to happen so because that's going to be a bond agreement. Right. So in any case, the, I think the answer is that we're nowhere near a debt ceiling. If, oh, that's a safe that. assumption, yeah. Which is good. Yeah. Anything else? Okay. See nothing else? We will vote on warrant number five on the 8th of March. Thank you. Thank you for your questions and thoughts.